Commission's uh, proceedings. I'm Vicki Burkhardt, and I have the pleasure of serving as your conference MC. For those of you who attended the social chats after the president's reception yesterday, I hope you were able to catch up with some friends and maybe make a couple of new friends. Um, Zoom, I'm told it's the next best thing to being there, at least for right now, um, hopefully for not much longer. I really look forward to seeing all you guys in 2022. Um, as we begin, begin the first day of our three educational tracks, and this is track one, I wanted to remind everybody that all of our sessions are being recorded and can be accessed for your board and volunteers. This is gonna be a great way for you to share the Kids Chance experience with the rest of your team if they were unable to actually attend during conference time. This will also allow you to revisit a session if you need to. And as usual, all of the conference materials will be made available on the Kids Chance website soon after after the conference. A small housekeeping item, I would like to introduce you to Linda Howard, our conference technology coordinator. Linda will be providing direction throughout the conference and is available for the support that we all need. You'll find Linda's information in the chat box. On behalf of Kids Chance and all of our volunteers, I want to take uh, some time to thank our conference uh, sponsors for their support and participation in the 2021 virtual conference and our success. In this virtual world, it is great to know that we can count on our generous conference sponsors to provide the support we need to bring this community together at times like this. Your involvement, sponsors, is vital, and we thank you very much for your support. It's time again for a student spotlight. As I mentioned yesterday, we have a series of student testimonials we will be sharing throughout the conference. Let's start the day by hearing from not one, but two of our student scholarship award recipients. Take it away, Bob. And welcome to Student Spotlights, where we look at some of the faces and names of the kids around the country that are in the Kids Chance uh, system. Today, we're joined by Kiana Favela and Kiahi Favela, both from Hawaii. They're both scholarship recipients from Kids Chance of Hawaii. And um, they are joining us today from, I believe, their school location in uh, California. But I'd like to welcome you guys and uh, ask you just to if you would both just give me a moment to talk about what brought you to Kids Chance and then we'll get into a little bit about your schooling. So when I was a senior in high school, I was accepted to my dream school and I was so determined to go because I just fell in love with the school. Um, so despite the high cost, I really wanted to make sure that I could go to Chapman. Um, so in my free time in my high school, I spent looking for scholarships on Google and I Googled for scholarships for kids who lost a parent and Kids Chance of America is the first one that I came across. Um, so I did a little bit of research and I saw that there was actually no scholars yet from Kids Chance of Hawaii. So I reached out to the head of Kids Chance of Hawaii and she immediately gave me a phone call and was just so excited to help me. And then um, after my sister got it, I actually found out about the scholarship to her. Um, and then I sent an application the next year and I got accepted as well, uh, thankfully. Yeah, so um, I'm a senior right now. I'm studying health science with an emphasis in pre-med, and I also have a cluster in business and economics. Um, my goal is to eventually continue my schooling and go to medical school and become a medical doctor in the future. And I'm a sophomore. I'm double majoring in broadcast journalism and documentary and political science. And I'm really interested in both subjects and I'm loving it so far. Yes, it's been a really big impact to be a Kids Chance of Hawaii scholar um, because it's Kiahi and I, plus we have two younger siblings who are gonna be going to college soon. And it's only my mom that's providing for us. So having Kids Chance of Hawaii help to fund our college experience um, makes it so that me and my three brothers can all pursue a higher education. Yeah, it helps to kind of alleviate that financial burden that's put on my mom's shoulders of trying to send four kids through college and, and get them a good education all by herself. Not only has Kids Chance of Hawaii helped to fund my family through college, but it's also become a second family to me 
and I always look forward um, to updating them about my college experience and also hearing about what they're going through and how they've gone through their COVID quarantine. Um, it's just always great to be in contact with them. And also just seeing all the support we're given, it's, it's so loving and it just makes me want to be able to give back one day as well to kids uh, who are in the same circumstances. Wow, isn't that wonderful? I think we've got a, a long time relationship with the favela family since we've got two younger ones coming along. Absolutely wonderful. Two of Hawaii's finest students, I'm sure. Thank you for sharing your stories. Best wishes as you pursue your educational goals. We're fortunate to have Sedgwick as our track one sponsor. Sedgwick is a leading global provider of technology, enable risk benefits and integrative business solutions that include property, casualty and integrated risk services and benefits administration with 27,000 colleagues located in 65 countries. Taking care of people is at the heart of everything they do. Caring counts at Sedgwick. Today's track is all about building community from how we share our brand to how we communicate with our constituents, it all matters. The sessions today will take a deeper dive into effectively engaging our communities on multiple levels. At this time, I am very pleased to introduce Katie Burkhart, the Kids Chance brand strategist to introduce you to our keynote speaker. Take it away, Katie. Thank you, Vicki. Um, the first thing I want to do is to thank our keynote sponsor, Optum. Um, Optum, a part of United Health Group, is a pharmacy benefit manager and care services group operating across 150 countries in North America, South America, Europe, Asia Pacific, and the Middle East. Um, we at Kids Chance thank them very much for their support. Um, it's now my pleasure and with great enthusiasm that I get to introduce you to this keynote speaker. Um, Nick Westergaard has been called one of marketing's most draw dropping speakers. Um, as chief brand strategist at Brand Driven Digital, he helps build better brands at organizations of all shapes and sizes from small businesses to Fortune 500 companies. Nick is the author of the books Brand Now um, and Get Scrappy. He is a contributor to the Harvard Business Review and host of the popular On Brand podcast. Nick's thoughts have been featured in news sources such as US News and World Report, Entrepreneur, Forbes, Mashable, and more. And if that wasn't enough, he also teaches at the University of Iowa's Trippy College of Business. It is my pleasure, and please welcome with me Nick Westergaard. Thank you so much, Katie. I am so excited to be here. I am going to share my screen but to do that that's the is this odd bit of clunkiness and i feel like there's some sort of on-screen uh, distraction that if if only i could do something uh that would help us pass the time and would be something interesting to look at uh thanks to the great folks at kids chance for both having me here today and for providing very serious uh, equipment that can help us in delivering this story like this. No, I'm not going to deliver the entire presentation that way, though that would certainly be a lot of fun. But I want to talk a bit about how you can build a trust brand now. Now, the funny thing on the branding front is if we were all together, I'd have asked everyone to raise their hands if they think that branding is a pretty important thing. And usually all the hands go up. We're excited. I see Jesse's hands up. I see other hands up. And then I ask the follow-up question that says, and now keep your hands up if you've invested significantly in brand building efforts in the year ahead. Some of the hands go down immediately. Some of them go part way down. Some people kind of look at the other people that they're there attending with? Do other people still have their hands up? Because we don't know exactly what to do with this branding thing. And I can say that I've been guilty of this as well because there's so many other shiny new things that we are told to focus on more instead. All of these new and emerging social networks. So much so that Years back, when I was asked to take over the branding courses at the University of Iowa, 
where I teach for a colleague who was going on sabbatical, I thought, yikes, what do you say about branding? So I avoided the problem with a trip to Costco with my then two and a half year old son. Costco is a great place to take little kids because everything is protected high up on great big heavy shelves. There are free samples that you can kind of keep them uh, fed along the way. But I was surprised when all of a sudden, when walking through the aisles of Costco, when my then two and a half year old says, coffee. I'm looking around because we're not in the coffee aisle, but I realize that it is because we'd gone past the storage unit sized boxes of Starbucks K cups that they have at Costco, and he'd seen the Starbucks mermaid. And he knows because he is the youngest of five kids, and he often tags along with my wife and I on various travels. He knows that when we see that mermaid, we say coffee, we get a treat, he gets a treat. Whether that's at a standalone Starbucks, whether that's inside another store. So it occurs to me that if a global category leader can imprint on a two and a half year old with limited vocabulary, that maybe branding is not this antiquated thing, but maybe something that we rather need a better definition of. Because most of us, I'm in Iowa, especially in the Midwest, go back in time to that cattle branding thing. And I don't like this for a lot of reasons, one of which being it sort of implies a passive relationship that you are branding at something instead of what we've been talking about a lot this morning already, and that's this idea of community, that it's happening together. And branding is still a very important thing. We see that brand equity has a 90% greater impact on pricing power, preference, and loyalty, both online and in person. And when we talk about the power of word of mouth, which many across industries have said is one of the most important ways that we communicate about our brands, that all of these new digital tools actually offer us a way of scaling that word of mouth. And yet, and yet at a time when it should be easier than ever for us to share our stories, to build brands, there's actually been a 21% drop in the people who say that they understand brands today. So if we want to build trust brands that stand out, our brands need to move from person to person, from community to community. And to move, we need to master some dynamics. Now, if I could briefly run across the street from the business school over to uh, physics, borrow the definition of branding, it is a force that stimulates change or progress within a system or process. So what I want to walk through are seven brand now dynamics that can help you build a brand that is trusted by those that you serve. Now, you may have gathered I'm someone that can talk fast, click fast, if I move past anything that you wish, oh, I wish I would have had that statistic, that framework, fear not, because you can find all of this at nickwestergaard.com forward slash slides. It's my first name, last name, with two A's, dot com forward slash slides. Let's get started. Our first dynamic that we're going to talk about is meaning. Now, a lot of times when I'm talking about branding, I close the event, I walk off stage, and I'm quickly met by someone with their chest puffed out, a great big smile on their face. They say, we just rebranded. Yup, we just redid our whole logo. Ugh. A little bit awkward. I usually look for something to change the subject, asking them where they got that brownie from, because we know that your brand is so much more than just your logo. But to build on that a little bit, if we actually take the word logos 
at its true meaning, it comes from the Greek logos, which is the logic behind an argument. Furthermore, the study of logotherapy tells us that we as humans are always searching for the meaning behind something. So if we want our brand to stand out, we have to make sure that it stands for something. So in thinking about what your brand stands for, it's important to understand what it means to the people that you serve, that it's not just clothing, dog treats, cars, that something like Lululemon is about technical clothes for people in sweaty pursuits, that BarkBox is all about being able to be a gift giver to that favorite four-legged friend of yours, that many drivers are a part of a community of drivers that flash their headlights at one another. So you have to think about how your brand appeals to either the head or the heart or both through flexibility, safety, timeliness, through uh, the heart, humor, belonging, nostalgia, responsibility. I can already tell you with what I've heard about the kid's chance story that I can see both head and heart benefits in there as part of it. So in thinking about meaning, you have to ask yourself, what business are you really in? And this is an important question, especially the last part, the really in. Because a lot of times we say, what our mission statement is, we think about we are a nonprofit that does X, Y, Z, instead of thinking about the benefits to the head and the heart that you're providing those you serve. Because these items are the spark that leads to your brand promise. From here, we talk about structure. And this is back to where, again, I am not a huge fan of the idea of branding. I much more like the idea of brand building that we are building something together with our community. And with structure, as we saw in that last image, it's important to think about the girders that hold your brand up. Those things that may be lying under the surface that help your brand stand up and stand out. So a lot of times when we're talking about brands, we focus on checklists of all of the different things that we need to do and checking all of these items blindly off of a list instead of thinking about your brand as a dimmer switch over there on the wall that we're turning different switch switches way up and maybe others down as well. Allbirds are one of my favorite brands of shoe. I'm actually wearing them right now, but I'm not a contortionist, so you're gonna to have to take my word for it. But they're wonderful here on Earth Day, environmentally friendly shoes made out of natural products, and they're extremely comfortable. They're an online company, and because of this, those online touch points matter most, like those simple shipping confirmation orders. Now, we get countless shipping confirmations every day, especially here during the pandemic where we're ordering so much online. And most of the time, these are bland touch points that say, thank you for your order. We are processing it. It's coming soon. Allbirds instead takes a moment and says, comfort is coming. Nice bit of alliteration and a little animated gif of a sheep packing up the wool and sending it off to you as well. This touch point matters. This is Megan Foster. She is a elected city official. She is an educator at the University of Iowa. She's a small business owner. She's the mother of five kids. If your powers of deductive reasoning are serving you well, if your spidey sense is going off, you may have figured out by now that this is in fact my wife. With five kids, several jobs, we do a lot of juggling. It's important that we find little treats that we can give ourselves along the way. 
One thing that Megan loves is box companies that will pack up various clothing items and send them to you. So she is a trunk club member. And one day I'm sitting in my office here working away when I hear her holler out in the next room. I go running in there thinking I'm going to find a, a, an intruder uh, that a small fire has broken out. But she's sitting on the floor and she turns to me and says, the trunk club box looks like a trunk. And after my heart started again, I realized this is another great example of those dimmer switches getting turned way up because something as simple as a box matters. I got a box in the mail from Kids Chance, which was a wonderful box full of fun things, important brand touch points, especially right now. There are also alternative brands that turn those dimmer switches way down. Think of brands like Tesla that don't have a great big marketing budget because instead they have Elon Musk's Twitter feed, which was a better example uh, a year ago. But with structure, you have to ask yourself, what are your most important touch points and how can you turn some of those dimmer switches way up to help you stand out. So from here, we go from structure to story. And I'm gonna stick with Elon Musk for a little bit because he needs to blow off steam too. I don't know if he's a Trunk Club member, maybe, but in his spare time, what he likes to do is launch new companies. And sometimes those companies are launching things into space like his space tourism company, SpaceX. And one interesting hurdle that they had to overcome with SpaceX was how are we going to see if we can send a great big heavy payload up into space? And he could have sent a weight or something boring, but instead he sent his red Tesla Roadster with a spaceman behind the wheel. Now, this is a great example of the power of story because we remember this weird test. We remember SpaceX because we remember this story. Stories are powerful. Neuroscientist Antonio Damasio notes that stories are the fundamental way in which the brain organizes information in a practical and memorable manner. There's some fascinating science behind the power of story. First of all, when we are exposed to simple facts, simple stats, one part of our brain might light up with activity. But when we're exposed to a story, when we hear someone's story, like those kid ch kids' chance student spotlights earlier, our brain lights up because we love story. We actually sync up with something called neural coupling. When someone's telling you a story, you sync up your brain with their brain and you start to mirror the emotions of the storyteller as well. So that's why when someone starts telling you a story, when you hear these student spotlights, all of a sudden you're transported to their point of view and start to think and feel what they're feeling. And because of all of this, your brain releases a neurotransmitter called dopamine, which is basically like the brain save button that says, we like stories, they make us feel things, they make us laugh, they make us cry. I want to remember them. I want to retell them. So as brand builders, story becomes an important tool for us to transmit meaning. Now, for many, a big hang up with this idea of brand storytelling is who the story's really about. Because a lot of times we think, oh, it's my story. I, I'm going to say regurgitate what's on our brand's about us page, which is important, but isn't the brand story that you want to be leading with. Because what you want to be leading with are the people that you serve. And this is one place where I think Kids Chance 
already has these dots connected because you're sharing those student stories, continuing to push those out in front. We were talking a, a bit about Boston. I was in uh, Boston once uh, a few years ago and was in Logan Airport, had travel on the brain and saw what I thought was a great big ad for Oreo cookies, but it wasn't. I was bummed there were no cookies in this for me. It was an ad for consulting giant Accenture. And it says Mondelez International is reinvesting savings to grow. And guess how much we're helping them save. So they've pushed the people that they're helping out front. Another important aspect of story that we like to skip over with brand storytelling is conflict because we're afraid that we're gonna tell a story that's upsetting, that these sharp edges are going to uh, upset those that we're serving. But these conflicts in our story, these rough edges are actually the points of interest that are oh so important in helping our story stand out. You also have to make sure that you're using a unique brand voice in sharing that story. So let's take a look at an example of a commodity product with an interesting brand voice, something as simple as underwear. Because you could say that there's nothing that remarkable about underwear. How could you have an interesting brand voice for men's underwear? But Duluth Trading Company would say something a little bit different about that. Known for their signature, line of underwear, buck naked underwear, the most comfortable underwear there is, which promises no pinch, no stink, no kidding. That is what their ad says. And it's a great example of brand voice because you're not going to confuse Duluth Trading Company's brand message with any other brand out there. So you want to make sure that you understand what your brand voice is. Uberflip is a video hosting software company that has a great brand voice. They actually make their style guide public. You can find it at styleguide.uberflip.com. But they note that their brand voice should be cheeky, but not offensive, accessible, but not fluffy, progressive, but not aloof. I think Uberflip gets extra points for both saying what their brand voice should be and what it shouldn't be. So think about your brand's core story and what should your brand voice be? Now, if you need a hint for getting at brand voice, think about if money wasn't an object, think about who would record your brand's voiceover. Then you can start to extrapolate who, what the traits of that voice might be. So from story, we go to content. Content isn't anything new. Actually, it, it's been around since the early caveman times. I have to think that some of those cave drawings had to be about trading other cave people for a bigger, better club. Google's Eric Schmidt says that every two days we create as much information online as we did from the dawn of civilization up until 2003. The average consumer now seeks out twice as much content than they did just two years ago, which is why 80% of marketers are using content marketing in some form. 74% of those same marketers are producing more content than they were just last year. The problem, most lack a documented content strategy. We have to know why we're producing this content instead of just creating content because everybody else is doing it. Good content is both brand centric and customer aware. It's brand centric in that it's accomplishing the objectives that you're looking to, and it's customer aware in that it is also reaching your customers where they are. For example, Lucky Paws 
is a dog daycare company here in Iowa City, Iowa, that has a very simple blog that has photos of what the dogs are doing, enjoying the day. This is brand centric because it's sharing their story and the dogs and dog parents that they serve, but also helping to attract new potential customers as well. IBM Watson does a great job of this with their blog on things like customer analytics in the time of bots. So when it comes to content, you have to ask yourself, what can you and you alone create? There's too much content. You don't want a blog post, a blog, a video series, just because everybody else has one. From here, we get back to that word that we've been talking about a lot, community. And it's important as you build your brand to think about how you can embrace your people power, both internally and externally. And this is where I think it's important to think about your circles of community, starting with the center of this circle, your employees, your people because there's only an 8% overlap between employees and employers' social connections. And on average, employees have 10 times more. And we can start to see how these circles interrelate with one another and how happy employees can create even more happy relationships as well. And before you start radiating outward from employees to those other external stakeholders, I think it's important to think about those who are in what I call the forgotten middle circle that are easy folks to forget about. Vendors, suppliers, partners, sponsors, those that are in this mission with you but may not fit the category of either employees or audience, external either. And as you think about your external audience, think about how you can make them feel like they are part of your internal audience. Maker's Mark does a great job of this by literally making their best customers brand ambassadors, card-carrying brand ambassadors. We've talked about gathering in person. Salesforce does this in by taking over the city of San Francisco every year for an event that promotes activity among all of their circles of community by putting those success stories on stage. And all of this helps to create brand gravity that you can hopefully build from those outer circles in. So in thinking about your circles of community, how can you get to know them even better. From here, with community, we go to clarity. And clarity, if you look it up, actually has a couple of different definitions. Clearness or lucidity as to perception or the quality of being clear or transparent to the eye. So basically, it means being transparent and simple. I like both of these definitions and both are important, especially Today, it's important to be transparent. And this may sound obvious, but as marketers, as brand builders, we don't always have a great track record when it comes to being transparent with our audience. See history, for examples, of things like more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. But as Siegel and Gale's David Sreri has said, if you lie, you die. Today, United can't just say, fly the friendly skies, and then in actuality, they break musicians' guitars and bloody passengers because people have phones and can document places where your brand story doesn't match. So you have to be proactively transparent like Patagonia does, and they have a pretty good record of social responsibility, but they are proactively transparent in documenting the impact that they're having. It's also important to be simple. 
because there's a 44% increase in the perception of simplicity among the most innovative brands globally. And I think this is important because it gets back to that earlier point that we talked about, because there's been a 21% drop in the people who say that they understand brands. With all of this information that we have, that we know about, as we looked at in that quote from Google, we have too much information. The audience is overwhelmed. And as we try to communicate with them, oftentimes what we're trying to do is too much. More isn't always better. Sometimes more is just more. Think back to Google, who as a brand has stood out because they have that simple search bar. They dominate the search category and they weren't the first ones there. You can think back to brands uh, like Yahoo, brands like AOL with incredibly crowded home pages. So you have to think, where can you simplify your brand name, your brand promise, your products, services, website navigation, content strategy? Transparent, simple brands move faster. So you have to ask yourself, where can you simplify what you say and what you do? And where can you close any gaps that may exist as well? Finally, as we look at everything together, it all comes down to experience. Brand experience can be everywhere, sometimes even in roadside attractions. Now, we were traveling back when you could travel with our five kids on our way back from a speaking engagement at an in-person conference, like uh, so not unlike this one, when we were struck by a sign by the side of the road coming back from an event in Minneapolis that promised the Spam Museum. Come see great porks of art. My wife and I looked at each other and thought, today is the day we're making the Spam Museum happen. It is like Times Square, but for Spam, with exhibits and activities for kids and hallways documenting how Spam is used in the world around us. Unless you think that I'm some sort of great big Spam fan, I bring this up as an example, rather to point out if spam can build a remarkable brand experience, why can't you? Because 70% of us believe investing in experience is key, but only 13% believe that we excel at it. So to get better, we have to walk a mile in our customer's shoes. And to do this, we have to build a brand touch point map, documenting our entire experience and looking for ways that we can make different stops on that map remarkable. And here too, we can utilize circles. You can start in the center with your core brand DNA, which we've been talking about. You can radiate outward and look at how you can make something as simple as maybe product packaging or a, a box that you send out, as we've been talking, remarkable. Or all of your interactive digital marketing communication touch points. Zappos does a great job of this with their app. Of course, they'd want something that scans credit cards, but they decide to have a little bit of fun with it by making it a little cap that pops up and zaps your credit card with lasers. Your brand, your experience is your brand promise delivered. So here you have to ask yourself, if you walk a mile in your customer's shoes, what do your circles of experience look like and where can you turn some of those dimmer switches as we talked about earlier way up. So that's a snapshot of the seven brand now dynamics, and it's a lot. 
it could sound like, oh, now I have all of this to do. But your job as a brand builder is actually to coordinate the efforts of all of these different areas, to work on drawing out the stories, to work on building a unique brand experience with those different circles of community. So this involves a lot of people. You're less like the one person that has to do the work and more like the director of a movie, coordinating all the different parts, the conductor of a symphony. I've asked you to ask lots of different questions throughout this conversation, but I want to leave you with two final ones. These are the most important questions as you leave and think about the work of brand building. And those questions are, where are you now as a brand? And where do you want to be? Where are you now and where do you want to be? Because if you're not where you want to be, that's okay. Because branding ultimately is aspirational. It's a flag that we plant in the ground and we work to get towards it day in, day out. We may not make it all the way there every day, but we're striving to get as close to it as we can. Brick by brick, day by day, that is how you build a trust brand now. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to take any questions you may have also. Thank you, Nick. That was awesome. <laughs> that was just really awesome. We got lots of, I got lots of um, person or private comments in the chat, even. This is great. This is great. So we do have a couple of questions. Um, first one would be, how is a nonprofit or a cause branding different? How is it different? The first caveat I put in front of this, and it sounds like an eye-rolling non-answer, is that it is not as different as we often feel that it is. We have different labels, and I, I was weaving back and forth between customers, stakeholders, audience, uh, all of these different things, but we're, we're all trying to do the same thing. A lot of these big questions, these big prompts are the same, especially that last one of where are you as a brand now and where do you want to be? Uh, there are some ways that a nonprofit is, a, I don't want to say, a, is either ahead of or it's easier for, like in the area of story. Businesses have so much trouble getting it through their head that it's not about us. It's not about my product. It's not about my features, my benefits, all of these things. Uh, because from the, uh, the nonprofit perspective, especially when it's service focused, when it is, uh, has such a strong mission like Kids Chance does, that is front and center. We weren't going uh, for, for very many minutes, even in the beginning of today, before that reappeared front and center in the form of the student spotlights. So I would actually say, as we talk about something like branding, which it can be easy to think of as coming from the world of business, I would say it's important to not lose sight of, of some of those mission focused things that are helpful um, and, and, and to really look for ways that you can amplify them even further. Right. I think that may, that's all we have time for. It's 1245. Thank you so much. This the one a really oh did you have another I was point? just going to I was I'm just so going to say as as it's all we have time for my email address is up here I, I love email I'm a big fan I have no problem sharing my email with the world so feel free to to drop that uh, into the chat uh, as well it's just nick at branddriventigital.com but I'm happy to to hear more to to talk with with anyone 
and uh, yeah. Thanks, Nick. I Thank really you. enjoyed that. And I have to tell you, I'm a big Allbirds fan myself. In fact, I think it's the greatest shoe ever. And I, yeah, <laughs> look forward to that. It was, it was great to hear you really be able to give us some solid um, examples of, of what we should be looking for when we do branding. I think many of the people on the phone are like me. I sort of take cover when somebody says, let's, let's talk about branding. Um, I'll be the first one to admit that, you know, branding, marketing, and communications has always been a challenge for me in my entire nonprofit um, career. So uh, great presentation. Thank you so much for being with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank and you. thank you again to Optum for making Nick's presentation today possible. Uh, we're going to take a quick break before we move into the afternoon session. So if everybody needs, a, like I do, a coffee refill um, or a restroom break, take it now. <laughs>